This is a 2008 Infiniti M45. Let me start it. I'll tell you, the reason I'm recording video right now is that earlier in the day, when I was coming to work, uh, it was like what? It was like 27 degrees Fahrenheit in the, uh, when I was coming to work. And I got out of my subdivision to join the main road and I got on the gas quite aggressively, you know, quite, not stupidly, just with a little bit of oomph. And when that happened, I had a bunch of lights come on, warning lights. I had uh, VDC, brake, slip, rear active steer. I had, what was the other one? Uh, lane departure warning. Let me, let me get my seat belt on first. So yeah, I had quite a bunch of lights come on and the car, nothing changed in the way the car drove. It drove just normally. It, um, I'm trying to work with my lighting situation here and focus. Great. All right. So, um, it drove okay. Um, the idle never changed or anything. So there are two scenarios. Typically with these vehicles, if you get a VDC brake and slip light, usually usually is something to do with um, with your brake system. It's a weird brake warning system, but then when your brake pads wear down, this length or rather this width that was taken up by the brake pads, the piston has to extend further out. And then that volume that the piston leaves behind is, you know, more volume, that space that the piston leaves behind is more volume for uh, Cool, uh, not coolant. I've been talking about coolant all day for brake fluid to come in. So, what happens is that brake fluid leaves your reservoir and drops low, and then you get this you know, instead of just a brake light, you get all the, the, uh, the combination of lights. Um, usually, what people first do is you check your level, and depending on your urgency and all that stuff, some people just add brake fluid which is it's okay it's patching the you know it's kind of treating the symptom doesn't really address the root cause what you're supposed to do is change your pad so that you don't push everything back and fluid goes back up if you add um, fluid to it one hopefully you don't forget to check your brake pads anyway you know as i said it's not a judgment it's just about what do you uh what do you want to do so i checked and my brake fluid was right about halfway between um, min and max so I don't know maybe maybe it's an issue maybe it's not we'll just see usually like I'm doing right now I'm stomping on my brakes and nothing's happening I mean I stop in reasonable amount of uh, in reasonable distance so the other possibility is usually a camshaft sensor funny as it is as I said Nissan and whatever their scheme is that's what they decided would be the warning uh, warning um, signal so if you're lucky sometimes you get a check engine light and your camshaft sensor come you know would basically have a code PO340 but sometimes that sensor doesn't even throw any codes it just causes weird issues like hard to start um, stalling when you stop Sometimes it doesn't do anything functionally wrong. You just get these lights and, you know, as I said, so brake, slip, VDC, which is related to your um, ABS system. And I've, I've made a video in the past as to how much of your car's smart um, safety systems are dependent on that ABS module. So obviously you lose cruise control. Funny to think about that, right? You lose lane departure warning and things like that. Anyway, let me let me get moving so that uh, we'll we'll see what happens here. Just I wanted to see how long it would take before you know before coming on again. Right now, I know the zoom is kind of funky right now, but it's one eighty six five zero two. That's the mileage. I want to see if it comes on pretty soon or not. I need to remove this autofocus because it's messing me up. I just cleared a spot in my garage where I'll be doing a lot of um, maintenance. Well, it's also the same spot that's being used for engine prep. So I'll try to replicate what I did in the morning, which is if it's not a distance thing, 
by the time I get to the main road leaving work, this one, uh, there's a lot more distance to be covered here. I should have covered the same amount of um, distance that took it, uh, you know, like it did at home where everything came on, every light came on. If not, again, by the time I get to that main road, I'll be able to get on the gas pretty aggressively. So for now, I'm just, you know, driving Miss Daisy. So far, all normal. But I'll tell you what, I need to address my control arms. You can tell my bushings are shot. I bought them, it's just that I haven't, I guess, been motivated enough to do it. Been busy. Been busy making money. Or at least attempting to. So far, so good. Distance, I know I've covered the distance. So what I'm gonna do is this, slow down. Not exactly drag race, but just say you're joining a highway at high speed. Okay, let's go, just aggressive driving. I do, I think I braked back then, you know, because it was traffic. There you go, there's a brake light. This brake light came on. So I think my, my problem is that I have, I'm getting low brake fluid level. And I suppose when I checked my car, obviously I was outside the vehicle, but if you think about it, um, I do have the Acubono brakes, so my calipers are a little bigger. So when they wear, I mean, the I believe the uh, brake fluid reservoir in this vehicle is much smaller. So if I stomped on the brake hard enough for everything else to come on, those lights will end up staying. You know, the brake light by itself is just an indication of, hey, your brake fluid is low. But if it stays on, now, you know, it can also come on for your e-brakes and things like that, but as it is right now, that that's what I'm thinking. Okay, let me stomp on the brake at the bridge, past the bridge, of course. Okay, let's do it. Brake light. Then it lets go when I stop. Right? Crazy. <laughs> I think that's enough footage for now. Well, I'm going to address the brakes in this car pretty soon. As I said, I had cleared a spot in my garage to do winter, uh, fall and winter maintenance, but it just, I guess, the issue came up a little earlier than I anticipated to address it. And what the plans I had for this uh, for this car, the M45, were lighter. Well, I was thinking of getting lighter wheels eventually, but so we'll see. Uh, brake, 
uh, two-piece brake rotors and just standard Akibono pads. It's but again, the the reason of of the the two-piece brake rotors is taking quite a long time is because the the whole purpose of buying well, the one of the main reasons for me buying the brake two-piece brake rotors will be one weight savings. I got the heavier rotors, the larger rotors by you know the sport brakes which are heavier and two I got larger wheels just like five pounds heavier but still you know I, I want to shave that off uh, kind of go back to getting uh, not not just for fuel economy but also for um, for acceleration the feel and the steering steering is kind of heavy in this one and not in a very pleasant way honestly not not according to me and so getting those two-piece rotors for one is going to be that I can get a lighter assembly, a lighter rotating assembly, a rotating mass, and two, they're supposed to be able to repair them. You know, just basically unbolt the outer uh, the the disc from the hat and replace them. But I've not been able to get any replacement discs at all. So I'm thinking, why instead of paying? Um, uh, 75 to 100 bucks for a rotor why would I pay like 200 for a rotor that I cannot you know I, I, the weight savings are worth it to me still arguable but you know as I said seeing this light on is definitely giving me um, it's motivating me in a different way you know I think that's enough video for sure for sure so don't want to catch myself on video doing anything goofy <laughs>